Hello YouTubers, Mr McRaven here and welcome to my quick tutorials guide for beginners in Sony Vegas Pro. Uh, for those of you that have used the program before, you might want to miss out some of these tutorials as they're going to be covering some of the uh, basic fundamentals of the program to which you probably already know. However, if you've come here and you've never used the program before and you feel a little bit intimidated by all the options and windows in front of you, then uh, there's no need to panic. Uh, if you watch some of my tutorials uh, you'll get a basic understanding of how the program works and in no time at all you'll be producing uh, your own little videos uh, either from your home clips or gaming clips that uh, you've managed to produce. So if you're looking to get started in Vegas and you want to make your own little project videos uh, here's a good place to start. So I'm using Sony Vegas Pro 9, you could be using version 10 or 11, it doesn't matter because the layout and the way that the Sony Vegas works hasn't really changed much throughout the versions so everything is applicable here as it is in newer versions. So the first lesson is actually going to be about the workspace and some of the things you need to do before you can begin working on a project. And one of those things is understanding the windows that are open. Now on your version you might have a few more open windows than I have here. Uh, not to panic, that is perfectly normal. It all depends on how you have it set up. Now I have this set up very very basically but you can adjust uh, each of the windows to match your taste. So if you wanted to add, let's say, an audio mixer uh, to your window layout, you can by going to View and uh, you can add uh, Audio Mixer. And there we have it, a uh, little window which allows you to control the audio of the project. Uh, equally, you can get rid of it by clicking the X, as with any program, or you can add it back by just ticking it again from the View tab. Now if you feel comfortable and you have all the windows that you want and you have them all docked and you're quite happy with the everything's, way everything's laid out and you want to save that, you can do that. Window Layouts, Save Layout As and you can personalize it yourself and even add it uh, to a hotkey so that you can open it each time you open a program and have it however you like. You can organize your layouts, etc, etc. So self-explanatory there, but you don't have to do that. You can leave the program as is or you can adjust it. So if you want any uh, extra windows, you can add them or take them away. Now each window is fully adjustable as you can see and you can adjust the height and width of everything so you can have a really big preview window if you like or really small so that's entirely up to you. So here we have the preview window and this is probably one of the most uh, used windows that you're going to use because obviously you want to see what you're doing before uh, before you finish it so in this uh, black box it acts like a miniature version of your display so all the work that you're doing down here will be displayed up here in a preview but we're going to come back to the preview box uh, so you can understand how it works and how to best use it uh, according to the hardware that you have in your PC. We're going to get rid of this uh, mix box because we don't need it. And down here we have the timeline and when you add media uh, whether it's video or audio it'll be uh, down here and it will occupy space within this timeline and uh, most of your work will actually be down here. Again it's adjustable if you need to have more space to work on several tracks then you can raise it up and lower it down. So if you have some media in here and you need to zoom in uh, to the timeline to see more clearly then you can zoom in to an individual frame on the timeline and zoom out. You can use this uh, by either scrolling with your mouse wheel or using the uh, plus minus uh, zoom options down here below. So that's the preview window, that's the timeline and in the left here we have the uh, uh, the power tabs if you like. So on the first tab we have media generators and from here we can select texts, uh, color gradients, solid colors, test patterns, checkerboard, credit rolls. Uh, it will all vary from uh, what version of Sony you have. Some of them have more built in. Uh, this is only Pro 9 so it has only a few basic ones. So it's a few bits there that you can use but we're not going to go into how to use them just yet and the video effects as well. So all the different video effects that come built into the program are here. You'll notice uh, that if I hover my cursor above any of these effects then you will get to see a very small preview of what effect this will have if you added it. So let's take one that's extreme newsprint, there we go. So there's a preview of what kind of effect it will have. So there's a list of uh, effects there and transitions. 
Transition is what you use to go from one clip to the other. You don't have to use them, but you can do. As you can see in the preview there, this one undoes a shuffle. And uh, there are many default uh, options available. And each of these transitions uh, and video effects are uh, fully editable. You can adjust them uh, to suit your project. Uh, next we have Explorer. You can explore any parts of your computer to obtain uh, media, files, photos, and audio, things like that. And last but not least, uh, Project Media. Uh, within this tab, which is the one you'll probably be using the most, uh, is where you will have all the videos, audio, pictures, and things that you'll be using throughout your project, and any additional things that you actually create will be added here as well, so you can reuse them. I only have one clip at the moment, because that's all I need in order to show you how it works. So these are the basic windows and how to get started. We have the preview and I said I'll come back to the preview and uh, that's what I'm going to do. So what I'm going to do is I, uh, if I want to add media down here, if I want to add clips, I can click and drag it down. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move along the timeline so we can actually see. And as you can see in my preview window I've got some, uh, I think it's cormorants or I can't even, boobies I think they're called, these birds. Anyway, it doesn't matter. So we have the birds in the video and as you can see it's not a very clear crisp picture and the reason it's not a very clear and crisp picture is because I have it set here on the preview quality and at the moment it's set to quarter now to show you what I mean if I then put this to full you will now see that the picture is nice clean and crisp and here at the bottom of the preview window you will see the resolution and the frame rate so it's at 720 by 480 and it's at 29.97 frames per second. So there we go. That's what it means. So if I set it to full, it will be at full resolution, which is 720 by 480. If I go up to here and I click again to half, you'll see that the resolution in the preview drops to 360 by 240 and retains the frame rate. If I drop it down to a quarter, it will be quarter of the frame rate, uh, quarter of the resolution, and maintain the frame rate. Now you might be thinking, why would I want to look at something blocky and awful? Why can't I see it at its best? And the reason for this is, when you're working on uh, large projects, or even small projects sometimes, um, if you have uh, this at the fullest resolution, then it can slow down your PC if you don't have um, very high-end hardware. Uh, it all depends on how much you actually have going on down here in the timeline and how you have things set up, but it does predominantly depend on your hardware. So if you have really good hardware in your PC, then uh, you can select either full or half and uh, use the preview at those resolutions. But if you're struggling on, a, say, a dual core or some older uh, hardware, you might want to set your preview uh, to a lower resolution in order to work a bit more quickly. So that is what the uh, preview window is for. You can also save, uh, save uh, snapshots, so if you have uh, an, a picture here that you want to keep and it uses a snapshot later on, uh, you can do so, uh, but we're not going to go into that. So that's an explanation as to how and why the preview uh, window is the way it is, so depending on how you want to work, you can either have it full resolution or uh, let's say half. And uh, depending on your hardware, it'll either work quickly or it won't. So if you're uh, uh, editing down here and you find that it's working a bit slow and uh, it's stuttering then just adjust the preview uh, to one or two points lower in the resolution and uh, should speed up. So another thing to bear in mind before uh, I finish this uh, tutorial and move on to the next is you'll need to set some preferences because uh, sometimes uh, programs don't always set up uh, things how they should be. So if you go to options and you come down to preferences. What this will do is it'll open a tab, and there's lots of tabs here um, where you can change all of your preferences. But we're going to go to the video one. There's a couple of things here that you can adjust it in order to improve performance in uh, Sony Vegas, depending on your hardware. Uh, Dynamic RAM preview max megabytes. Now, what this does is it allots a certain amount of memory from, um, I believe it's from the video card. Uh, so that it can be used in this preview box. Now, currently it's set at 350 megabytes and it tells me what is uh, available. So if you have a decent uh, graphics card with a uh, high amount of memory, let's say uh, 3 gigabits of memory, 
uh, gigabytes of memory, sorry, then uh, you'll be able to set this higher. But remember, if you set this too high, you will start to have problems as well because uh, you need a certain amount of graphics memory uh, for Windows to run. So don't set this too high, but uh, do have a go at adjusting it uh, to see if you can improve performance using that. Uh, underneath this, we have maximum, maximum number of rendering threads. And what this means is how many CPUs do uh, does yours have? So if you have a quad core, uh, you would set this to four. And if you have a uh, six core, you would set it to six. But uh, in my PC, I have an eight core processor, so I set it to eight as it does use eight threads. If you have a quad core uh, with hyper threading, uh, you can include those threads and you can add that up to eight if you wish. So what this tells Sony Vegas is basically these are how many threads or how many cores I have that you can use in order to render uh, my videos. So adjust these two and um, if they're not set to a default um, then you can adjust these two to get better performance. So I'm going to click cancel because they were fine at default. Okay, so that's the first lesson covered. That's uh, how the windows work and how to get a general setup going of how you like to do stuff. So do come back for the uh, next tutorial, the next lesson, and uh, we're going to get started on how to uh, start creating your own videos and uh, editing and adjusting them. Uh, I hope this has uh, proved useful. Uh, if it has, leave a comment below. And let me know what you think uh, and what you'd like to see. And uh, come back for the next installment. Thanks for watching.